Caribbean Cricket Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things West Indies cricket, by the fans, for the fans. Kim Roach, and I listen to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. Yes, people, we're live. We're at, we're here. We're here. We're here. Sorry, the reason why I was so delayed is because I was trying to get the teams. I was trying to get the teams to put on the on the chat. Um, so bear with me, people. My name is Marshall Saint Patrick Hewitt. I'm one half of the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. I'm just about to put the teams into the chat. Um, so for Saint Kitts. Um, just writing it down now. Who have I missed? Oh, R- Jagasar. John Russ Jagasar. So in the chat now, you should see the St. Kitts team. Evan Lewis, Chris Gale, Darren Bravo, Andre Fletcher. Remember DJ Bravo, I think, is currently in the 100. Uh, Devil Bre- Brevis, Shafane Rutherford, Dominic Drakes, Janssen. Who the hell is Janssen? Uh, Dwan, 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 Janssen. Um, who else have I missed? Uh, Carmichael, Jaden Carmichael, Jeremiah Louis, and John Russ Jagasar. As Supernova 22 says, that St. Kitts team is indeed very strong. It's a very strong side. Um, and that side is strong even without DJ Bravo in it. I think if you're looking at the wider CPL, I mean, okay, now let's look at the 60, because at the end of the day, this is a 60 game. In the context of the 60, look at the power hitters in that side. Lewis, Gale, Fletcher, Rutherford. Just those four alone. And I'd even chuck in Brevis um, as well. That is a power hit inside. I think if you look at the wider CPL, I think we did our CPL um, analysis show. And I think I said on it that we did it with um, Young Badry. And we said on it that the only team, I think, in CPL this year that can challenge TKR will likely be the defending champions, uh, the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots. But I'm here to support Jamaica. Done know the done know. You can see my Talawas jersey up on the wall behind me. Maybe we can win the 60 because we ain't winning CPL, that's for certain. So um, anyways, the Jamaica team, the Talawas 11. Let me just write that in. So the Talawas 11. Um Rothman Powell, Fabian Allen, Ashmead Ned, uh, Kinar Lewis, Miguel Pretorius, Chris Green, Raymond Reefer, J- Jamie Merchant, Amir Jangu, Shamar Springer, and Nicholson Gordon. That side looks like a big old ruck side. But you know what? We move. We have to move. We have to move and we have to try and do a little ting out here. St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots won the toss, I believe. I, I swear when I was watching just before I came live. Yeah, they won the toss and they will field... First, so let me just write in this um, this Jamaica side. Jam- watching Jamaica in 60 and CPL is going to be hard work, you know. Our side looks like a big old ruck side, you know. Um, but we have to move. We have to move and, you know, rally around this Jamaica side all the same because, boy, they're going to need it. You never know, though. 60 might suit them. Um, yeah, so the Talawa side have just put in the chat. Uh, Powell, Jangu. And it looks like it's going to be Jangu. Who's that? It looks like it's going to be Jangu and Kanar Lewis opening. Kanar Lewis looks like he's lost weight, boy. Is this a new, is this a fitter version of Kanar Lewis? He look, He doesn't look as muscular. Um, He doesn't look as muscular as he normally is. It looks like he's going to open with um, Amir Jangu. Sorry, so let me put these sides up if you don't know. So that's the Talawazi 11. Powell, Jangu, Lewis, Allen. Who's, um, that's Ken R. Lewis, if you don't know. Um, Raymond Reefer, Shamar Springer, Jamie Merchant, Chris Green, Miguel Pretorius, Nicholson Gordon, who's been taking a lot of wickets um, at first class level, and Ashmead Ned. And then the St. Kitts side, we find them. Evan Lewis, the Universe boss, Darren Bravo, uh, Andre Fletcher, Devil Bruif, Bruvis. Shafane Rutherford, Dominic Drakes, Dwan Janssen, Jaden Carmichael, Jeremiah Louis, 
and John Russ Jagasar. So that's the two sides. The stream in Trinidad, is it not TV6 in Trinidad? Anyways, the earlier game, is that Janssen? Looks like uh, Dwan Janssen is going to open the bowling for St. Kitts. Um, I don't even know who Dwan Janssen is, you know. Here's me pretending to be a cricket head and I don't even know who these players are. Dwan Janssen is probably a South African, yep. Yeah. South African cricketer who has played zero international games. I wonder how St. Kitts knew to pick him up. Anyways, uh says here is an exciting all-round talent from the Northwest Province in South Africa. He has played 12 T20 matches in his career, not internationals, just 12 T20s. Kanar Lewis has a T20 strike rate of 129. He's in my fantasy team, actually. I put him in my fantasy team. Ah, Errol Johnson, Errol says, sorry, that uh, Dwayne Janssen looks like is Michael Janssen's brother, which makes sense. Um, for those who still don't remember, these are the rules of the 60. Each batting team has six wickets, not 10. You can unlock a, thir a floating power play if you hit two sixes in the first two overs. Uh, Shea Hope did that today for... Um, uh, Ghana and Amazon Warriors. Anyways, Dwan Janssen, Janssen comes in. And Kanar Lewis spoons that high in the air off the first ball. It's gone so high. And he's got away with it because it went so high. He might have taken out an airplane. That's how high it went. I don't blame I don't blame Jagasar for not catching that, you know. That went so high. Unless you had sunglasses in, there's no way you could have seen that in the sun. That's how high it went. It's unbelievable how high it went. That went so high that it was just as if Canal Lewis was told to hit it as high in the air as you possibly could. Oh, hold on. So who's that coming in? It looks like Jagasar was going to catch it. And then Rutherford, uh, Rutherford came in. And maybe Jagasar left it because he thought that Rutherford was going to catch it. Either way, they left it between them. Lewis gets away with it. Uh, and he's still there. It's a very interesting choice from Jamaica um, to open with Amir Jangu. Um, alongside Kenar Lewis, looking at their side and looking at how short the format of the 60 is, I'm not sure what they're hoping to achieve by having Jangu open. Maybe even chuck like a Raymond Reefer in there, Jopin. I don't get it. Um, don't get me wrong, the side's not strong anyways, but it's just interesting to open with Jangu. Fireball says that TV6 is shaming them down. He's going to stone Sagba's house. Um... Who else is saying Sports Max? Supernova says Sports Max is Sports Max isn't streaming this. He's gone to YouTube. I say I just cussed out Django and he's just hit that one for four. So three balls gone, and the Talawas are seven without loss. If you've just come in the live, press like, press subscribe, share this with people. This morning, our subscribers went up to 2.7k. It's little, but we're moving. We're moving all the same, you know, roll to 3k. And all that. There's there's obviously other West Indian sports channels with uh, a much bigger sub subscriber base than us, but we like to do quality over quantity. You know, we're on this quality thing. So um, press subscribe, press like, share it with anybody who you want to share it with, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Oh, that's nearly chopped onto his stumps, but Jangu runs through for a single. Um, right. Anyways, let's get through some of these comments. T -t 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 Ronaldo says, no offense, but Patriots all the way. Yeah, listen, I'm kind of caught in two minds. Like Evan Lewis and um, Chris Gale are my guys. Um, obviously, Evan Lewis, we'd love for him to be playing for the West Indies. He's got his own little dramas going on. Chris Gale is the is the boss. I'd rather him be playing for the Talawas, but it is what it is, you know. Um, who said? Oh, bold him. Bold him, cleaned him up. Kanar Lewis is gone. Janssen clean bowls him, cleans him up. Lewis, I'm not even sure Lewis saw that ball. Was it a slower ball? Went straight through him. Went straight through him. Done him. Completely done him. So that's the first wicket. Let me see this. Was it a slower ball? No. Just done him. Lewis plays inside the line. Nearly showed his pants to a Ross Clark. Um, and uh, 
That's the first wicket. So the Talawas are eight for one after five balls. Lewis goes for three. He should have gone off the first ball anyway. Um, so Lewis goes, Lewis goes for three off three balls. Anyways, um, <clears throat> Tashan says, "Hey, Michelle, very happy that Guyana won the first match. Where's Santoki? Santoki doesn't do lives, people. Um, he uh, he just he just doesn't like lives." Um, he's, he prefers not to do them. I, I might convince him to come on a few, but um, li really and truly, the lives are um, sorry, really and truly, the lives are things that I'm the one most likely to do. That's no criticism, it's just Santoki doesn't really care about doing the lives, anyways. Robin Powell is the next batter. Um, I'm not even sure if he saw the Guyana match, I'll have to text him and see if um, he managed to catch obviously Guyana won by what was it seven runs or come was it seven runs? Um, because St. Lucia were bold out so i don't i don't know what's going was it seven wickets i don't know what they won by anyways guyana guyana one is the main thing um so yeah rothman powell is the new batter and he will face up jansen's last ball of the over oh nearly nicks that through wicket keepers really deep really deep what the hell's that? What the fuck? Sorry, people. Someone. Um, yeah, so um wicket keeper. Oh, it took the top of Canal Lewis's bells. He didn't get anywhere near that whatsoever. Just played inside the line. Yeah, Errol says that guy on the one by seven runs. Um Oh, was it Oldin bowling? I know Oldin got 36 not out or something, which is no surprise. But this is a thing that people have to understand. Both Oldin and Romario are significantly better with the bat than they are with the ball. You but you lot know where I stand on all this already. Let me not let me not retread um old thoughts there. So, anyways, good over from Duan Johnson. He Jansen, he goes for uh, eight off his first over, takes the wicket of Canal Lewis, and it will be Jeremiah Louis, who's been bowling very well. Uh, in domestic cricket for the Leeward Isles, West Indies A as well. He may well be getting a call up in the near future for the West Indies in some format of cricket. So he comes in now. Uh, Robin Powell is on strike. First ball is just clears the man on the perimeter and that goes down to the boundary. Robin Powell gets off the mark with a four. Tashan says, Russian CPL career has been interesting for me as a viewer. I was with the Tridents for a few years, then to Ghana, then back to the Tridents, and now to the Kings for only the 60. Oh, yeah, he got 41, didn't he? Sorry, I forgot about him. Russian Primus got 41. Uh, wrong. Big guy, Russian Primus. Uh, don't he know that people have to pass fitness tests? It's long. Anyways, um, so Rodman, Rodman hits a boundary, and uh, Talawas move to 12 for one off seven balls. And Rodman attacks the next one. That's gone out the ground. That's a six. Oh, no, no, it's not a six. It's a one bounce four down to Cal Corner. So it's another four. Talawas moved to 16 for one. This is the thing with the Talawas. I think our side is weak. And don't get me wrong. Obviously, Brandon King isn't playing um, today. Um, I can't remember who is in our, C our full CPL squad. Imad Wasim, uh, Brandon King. Shamar, oh, Shamar. Anyways, the point is there is with Powell and Allen, there is and Kanar Lewis, there is some explosive um batting in that side if they come off. But the problem when you have like explosive batters like that, it's unlikely to be consistent. So that's why I can't take the Talawas serious. And Robman goes after the next one, and that's another four. So three balls from Jeremiah Louis. Uh, in his first over, and they have gone four, four, four. Robin Powell goes has moved to twelve off four balls. The Talawas are twelve twenty, are twenty for one after nine balls or one point three overs, if you would prefer. Robin is not hanging about. This is how you got to be in the power play. Uh, Old Dean Smith's bowling improved in the last few t. Uh, is it T20s? Yeah, T20s versus the Kiwis. And Rodman goes after that one as well. He hooks that one. This time it looks like a six. Yes, just over the boundary. Rutherford tries to catch it, but it's gone over the boundary line. That's a six. If Rodman can get one more six of the final two balls, he will unlock the floating power play. It's 26 for one. 
Jeremiah Louis over now has gone four, 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 six. Rothman Powell moves to 18. Uh, Rothman Powell moves to 18 off five balls. Rothman is not hanging about out there. 18 off five balls for Rothman Powell. This makes sense. 60, the 60 format should suit somebody like Rothman Powell and Fabian Allen when he gets a bat as well. You let these type of players get in, they're going to take the game away from you in a nutshell. And Rothman goes after it. Has he cleared the bat? It's a six. He's unlocked the floating power play. Four, 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 six, six. That's two sixes in the initial two overs. He unlocks the floating power play. When will the Talawas decide to take the next power play? Jeremiah Louis has gone for 24 runs of five balls. The Jamaica Talawas are 32 for one off 11 balls. The Jamaica captain, Rothman Powell, who has who struggled in all the eyes, um, is now on 24 from six balls. This is why West Indies should just be done. Just be done with ODI cricket. Let's just play short format cricket and test cricket. Forget ODIs. That we ODIs can't help us. And that's a dot ball to end the over. So that over went for 24 runs, all to Rothman Powell. He's on 24 off seven. The Talawas can now take another power play over at some point between overs three and overs nine, as well as, of course, the mystery, the mystery power, uh, mystery uh, free hit whenever that will happen as well. So the Talawas are 32 for one of 12 balls. We're going to win this 60 tournament, of course, you know. By we, I mean the Talawas. Michael, listen, you don't want to watch T20s, but the game's the game, man. This is where it's going. T20, T20s is life. Um, we can't, they've, they've let the toothpaste out the tube. We can't put it back in now. So we might as well just embrace it. Anyways, uh, Evan Lewis, who is the um, Patriots captain, has asked John Russ Jagasar to come on and bowl the third over. How will he get on? It's uh, Amir Jangu on strike. Should be Amir Jangu on strike. Oh, no, it's not Amir Jango on strike. Oh, no, because they don't change ends. I forgot about that. Um, they're bowling all from the same end, so Robin Powell will stay on strike. Oh, that's well bowled by Jagasar Dot. Let me just head to Twitter. Did I actually tweet that I'm over on this thing? One second, people. Uh... Okay. Yeah, I did. That's fine. Here we go. So, yes, yes. Where are we? Uh, 32 for one of 13 balls. This one, he drags he drags that delivery, but Powell can't put it away. It's just one run down to the man on the boundary. And Jangu comes back on strike. I forgot Jangu was even out there. He's got four of two balls. Yeah, if if all of our tracks were flat tracks, then do you remember that series you played against England 2019 before the World Cup when Gale got like 450 runs across the five ODIs? So if you put the if you put the ODIs on flat tracks, then yeah, maybe it's worth going to watch the West Indies. Another single for Django this time. OGIs might be the best format, Michael, but we we are the worst at it. So make of that what you will. Uh, yes, Supernova Evan Lewis is captain. Errol says thoughts on the sixty so far. I've quite enjoyed it in parts. It's a good one for CPL. Powell drills that one down the ground. The man on the boundary, another single. Um, yeah, I just listen. It's just the sixty is just inoffensive, isn't it? It's just it's just fun. It's just a bit of fun. I don't think. I don't think you can watch the 60 and get over emotional about it. It's not killing cricket. It's just a five. It's like a, it's like a five day curry goat festival. You know, you just watch it and then, Oh, is he stumped or is he caught? He's caught. Surely you nicked that. Yeah, it's gone. I don't know if he's gone stumped or if he's gone nicked. I thought he nicked it. Either way, Amar J Amir Jangu is out. It's been a brilliant over in fairness from Jagasar. Um, and the Telawars are 35 for two. I need to see it again, see if it was a nick. I thought he nicked it, but he also... 
Yeah, it was a big nick. Yeah, so it's, yeah. You nick that. So, Bol Jagasar caught Fletcher. Uh, and Ame Jangu goes for five or four balls. I don't know why Jangu was opening. He hasn't got the game to be an opener in a short format. Uh, in a short form, I would say he doesn't. So, that was an interesting choice. Anyway, he's anyway, gone. Um Yeah, uh, Michael, I do think that T20 will become oversaturated. Um, I don't, I've got no time for it personally. Like I say, I've not watched any, I mean, I say I've done that. I'll watch it if West Indies are playing and I'll watch CPL, but that's it. I've got no time for IPL, no time for the 100, no time for Big Bash League, no time for BBL, no time for PSL. Don't care. I actually don't care. Don't care about this new South Africa League. Don't care about this new UAE League, whatever, like, I'm glad that all the West Indian players go and get their big bags from it because a man's got to eat a food. But I personally don't care and I'm not going to put time aside to go and watch any of those tournaments. Um, I watch CPL because I'm a Jamaican and I like to see the Talawas try and do well and ultimately suck, but I couldn't care, couldn't care less about any other um, franchise T20 tournament around the world. I've, I've, I'm in England and I've not watched one ball of the 100. Like, I just, I just don't care. Um, like, people are messaging me going, oh, Pollard did a madness today for London Spirit. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm happy for Pollard, but I don't care enough to go and watch it. Anyways, um, where are we? Uh, who came out? Oh, so Fabian Allen. Um, so where are we? Uh, Supernova says, uh, haven't seen Fabian Allen in months. Yeah, it's quite interesting, isn't it? And this, I'm not saying this to throw slander on any of the players. But it's quite interesting that we suddenly have a domestic T20 tournament plus the 60 and players who we ain't seen in time for the West Indies are suddenly here. Rutherford's here. Evan Lewis is here. Fabian Allen is here. Sunil Narayan will be here. Andre Russell will be here. Um, anyway, let me, you lot know. You lot know. Like, it's, it's funny, isn't it? It's funny. As soon as it's domestic tournament time or T20 franchise tournament time, a man can suddenly turn up for the big bag. That's all I'm going to say. Um, I, you lot know my thoughts on this already. Certain men are picking and choosing what they're doing. And then, oh, bloody hell. Rodman Powell has fetched that off his off, his off stump and launched Jaden Carmichael out the ground. I think that's gone on the top, top roof of the ground. It's an outrageous shot. Powell moves to 32. It's just a stand and deliver. Just fetches that and just muscles it onto the top. T Has it gone out the ground? It might have even gone out the ground, you know. I think it's gone out the ground. Uh, Powell moves to 32 of 12 balls. Because I don't have the volume on, I, I don't know if I've noticed if they took the extra power play over yet. If someone's got the volume on, have they already taken the um the, the floating power play over? So Robin Powell currently has three fours and three sixes. The Talawas are 42 for two. Those who don't know Jaden Carmichael, um, he is um, he played in the West Indies under nineteen team, the last under nineteen team um, in that in the recent World Cup. Oh, but he's followed brilliant, brilliant from the young nineteen year old. Um, Powell launches him out the ground, one ball. He comes back and cleans Powell up. Well done to the to the youngster. Love to see that. Um, love to see him not lose his shape. And uh, maintain maintain his composure, and he has bowled Powell. You have to love to see the young cricketers develop, and this is what something like the sixties are all about. Everyone thinks it's just another money grab for the big name players in the Caribbean, and to an extent it is, but it gives opportunities to the youngsters like Jaden Carmichael. I'm trying to remember which island he's from. Is he from Saint Kitts itself? I need to remember where Jaden's from. Uh, anyone who knows, get in the chat. Oh no, he's from Saint Lucia. Sorry. So Jaden is from St. Lucia, um, if I am right. Correct me if I'm wrong, people. I believe, is he St. Lucia? Or is he from, or is he from Nevis? Someone tell me. Place for Leeward Isles, anyways. Um, let me see if in the chat anyone's put the thing. <sighs> uh, 
Uh, so sorry, let me just update this score. So the Talawas are 42 for three. Raymond Reefer is the new batter. Two two new bat two new bats batters at the crease. Neither one is set. But Robin Powell's done his job. So the Talawas are 42 for three off 21 balls. Remember though, people, six wickets. Ah, it's the mystery free hit. It's the mystery free hit, ball number 22. So the youngster went dot six, bold Powell. Now he's got a mystery free hit to Raymond Reefer, who cannot connect. Well, he does connect, but only for one. Well bowled by Carmichael. He's probably lucky that the mystery free hit came when Rotherman Powell was out. So the new batter, um, was it, or was it Fabian Allen, actually? Sorry, the new batter was Fabian Allen. Just a little bit of drift. From Carmichael there. Um, uh, Sports Adam, Fabian wasn't injured. He was unavailable due to personal circumstances. I did some digging and I was told that those personal circumstances were legit. Unlike some of the other players where they say personal reasons and when you two twos you check now and you can't even find out what the personal reasons are. With Fabian, there was a family issue. Um but yes, I can totally understand. Raymond Reefer gets down on one leg and uh, in the end, that's all right fielding for the man on the boundary. Anyway, so sometimes this personal reason stuff can be a whole bag of foolishness, but Fabian's was legit. But obviously, if I was a neutral, I would be looking at this going, so how comes Fabian's suddenly available now once the 60s ready? Remember, the New Zealand series, the old guys just finished. 60 was like three days after the New Zealand ODI series ended, but Fabian's ready now. So I can get, I get it. I get it. I totally get why someone would look and they go, no, that don't make no sense. But I can only say what I know, you know? Anyways, at the end of that over from Jaden Carmichael, the Talawas are 45 for three of 24 balls. Some say four overs. And the new bowler will be Dominic Drakes for the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots. So earlier on in the piece, I think Guyana got to 111. Um, so that's the highest score so far for, in terms of the men's. And that's a bad ball from Drakes and Reefer shovels that over the man on the perimeter. And that's gone for a boundary down at the fine leg boundary. Oh, was it was it Reefer or was that Fabian Allen? Sorry, that was Fabian Allen, my fault, people. So, so Fabian Allen gets a boundary. They still, I don't think they've synced up on the screen properly who's batting where. So, um, yeah, they have not. Um, I'm still waiting for them to signal when they're taking the, the new power play over. And that's just a single for Fabian. Or I say the new power play, sorry, the fault the floating power play. So earlier on, people, I was trying to find out Jaden Carmichael. Earlier on, I said he was from St. Lucia, then I said he's from Nevis. I have I need to actually get some confirmation where this guy is actually from. Um so bear with me, people. I'm still trying to find out where Jaden actually was born. Anyway, his next ball, Raymond Reefer. Again, that's just down to the man on the boundary. No, he is from St. Lucia. So... Um, no, sorry. No, I'll take that back. He's from Nevis. So Jaden Carmichael is from Nevis. Sorry, not St. Lucia. So one bounce for the over. So uh, the Talawas are 51 for three of 27 balls. Fabian Allen is seven not out of four balls. Raymond Reefer is two not out from three balls. Bit of a slowdown coming here. It'll be interesting to see which one of Allen or Reefa can actually um, start pumping some boundaries here. That one's bowled down the leg side. I think he gets away with it. It wasn't given a wide, or was it? What happened there? Has a square leg umpire given that wide? 
Dominic Drakes doesn't look happy. Yep, Square Love Umpire has given it. Wait, what? No ball. Has he that was that a no ball for the second bouncer in the over? Those who are watching, what what was that no ball called for? Was it for another overhead height bouncer? Either way, it's a free hit. That's what Drakes wasn't happy about. The umpire signaled a free hit here. Um, so let's see what Fabian Allen can do with that. And it's bowled down the leg side. It's a wide. He's going to have to bowl that ball again. And it went down. Sorry. I in, in the midst of all that, I missed the fact they went down to the boundary. So he bowls a leg side wide, which goes for four buys. And he's going to have to bowl that three hit ball again. Drake's losing his head here a bit. The Talawas are 53, 57 for three of 28 balls. So do we still have a free hit ball? Here comes Dominic Drake now to bowl the free hit ball. He doesn't want to bowl another wide. He wants to get a dot if he can. Now this time Fabian Allen shuffles to a six stump line. Drake's tries to bowl it on a six stump leg stump line. If he'd left it, it would have been wide, but Allen just clears it out, the clears the boundary for a six. It's the first six for Fabian Allen. It's good to see Fabian Allen back in the Caribbean playing some level of cricket. And the Talawas move to 63 for free. Real, as Supernova says, real bonus runs. Real bonus runs here. Um, Drake's lost his head. That's the only way of looking at it. Drake's has gone for 18 off the five balls that he has bowled in this over. Talawar's 63 for three of 29 balls. One more ball left until we get to the halfway stage of the 60 between the Talawars and the Patriots. If you're new in this chat, I see that there's 34 people in here at the moment. Please press like if you if you leave. 37 people in here. Um, press like. They're getting new balls out. That ball's disappeared. Press like. Press subscribe. Share the share the live watch along, etc. I did so. We did a the plan. If you're new to the Cabin Creek podcast, or if you're a long time listener to Cabin Creek podcast, we're up to forty now. Big up all the people in the in the chat. Um, the plan is every day I will do a live watch along for one game. Okay, so today's chosen game was the Talawas versus St. Kitts. Obviously, there's two more games left today um, at eight o'clock or three o'clock Caribbean Eastern time. It's going to be Barbados Royals women versus TKR women. And then at 5.30 Eastern time, it's the Barbados Royals versus TKR men. So that that's a, I mean, that's going to be a good game to watch later on as well. Drakes comes in for the final ball of the over and Allen works that out on the leg side to the man on the perimeter, runs through for one. Where, oh, what happened there? I thought we were at the halfway stage, but I got my calculations wrong. It's 65 for three with one more ball to go. Sorry, I thought we we're at the halfway stage of the innings. I was I counted one more ball than there actually had been bowled. So Dominic Drake still has to finish his over. He's bowled five balls. He's gone for 20 runs. There's now 45 of you in the chat. Big up yourselves. Reefer tries to shovel that one, but he can only toe in that down to the man on the boundary. And we have now reached the halfway stage. If the Talawas continue on their projected score, they will reach 132 which would be a 60 high score, highest score so far, if they carry on the current trajectory. But remember, the Talawas have already lost three wickets. If they lose three more wickets, the innings will end as it is. So uh, the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots bowlers will now switch to the other side of the ground for the final 30 balls of the over. Um, you, uh, what was I going to say? With, if you are if you just joined in on the live, um, obviously... Uh, we've already had the mystery free hit. Um, and that's it. Yeah, so it's just 30 more balls to go. There's, Oh, no, sorry. No, I tell a lie. The Talawas haven't taken their floating power play over. They unlocked a third power play over, which they have not taken as yet. So they, at some point in the next five, six, seven, wait, how many overs? We've got five more overs. So at some point in the next four overs, they have to take the mystery power play Mystery, sorry, the floating power play over. In fact, this might be it. And as I said, that the umpire signals that the sixth over of the match will be the floating power play over, which they unlocked courtesy of Rothman Powell's two sixes. Um, the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots have responded by bringing Dwan Janssen back into bowl. Uh, he bowled a great first over. 
He took one for eight in his first over. So he will have to bowl the floating power play over. Can Fabian Allen and Raymond Reefer maximize it? There's 50 of you in the chat now. Big up everyone coming into the chat. I did this yesterday for uh, which game did I do as a watch along yesterday? TKR women versus Barbados Royals women. And the most that was in the chat for that was 23. So we're double the numbers. Big up yourselves. Right, first ball, and Reefer clears the man on the perimeter. He won't, he won't beat the man on the boundary. They'll run through for two. Reefer back on strike. Supernova says he thinks the Talawas will get to 118. Um, um, put, put your predictions in the chat, people. Yeah, Michael, so when I say every day, so the plan is every day. Remember, this tournament ends on Sunday, you know. So the plan is every day I'll just pick one game. Remember, the, and also, the reason why I'm not too bothered about doing that is these games are over in less than two hours. So, I mean, it's stamina for sure, but when they're over in, like, and, like this game's nearly over, right? Um, so it's not like I'm doing an ODI or a T20 match, so I feel like I can I can recover um, after it's done. That's well bowled by Anson, and Reefa can gets a bat on it, but just squirts it out uh, to where short leg would normally be. Um and runs through for one. Um, yeah, so to tomorrow's game. Hmm. Which game should I do tomorrow? I might do the game I might do tomorrow. Oh no, I can't do that one. Three. The game I might do tomorrow is TKR versus Guyana. Uh the men's game. Is that the men's game? Yeah. TKR versus Guyana. So I might do that game tomorrow. This time tomorrow, basically, is the game I might do. TKR versus Guyana. And then Saturday, um, I will probably do St. Kitts versus TKR, which would be the 5.30 Eastern game. And then Sunday, well, it's the semifinals and finals on Sunday. Um. I don't know what I'll do on Sunday. On Sunday, I might end up doing the women's final and then the men's final. I don't know, man. Michael's right. There's a whole heap of stamina to do stuff like that. But I'll let you lot know in it. If you follow us on Twitter, Facebook group, if you don't know about our face Facebook group, um, you can find us. Just search Caribbean Cricket Podcast in the Facebook group. We're up to 2,000. We're on 2.2K uh, members of the Facebook group. So you can find us on Facebook as well. Instagram at Carib Cricket. Right. Anyways, that ball, Fabian Allen is that's the Fabian Allen we all love. He launches that out of the ground. He moves to 20 off nine balls. Remember, people, we have barely seen Fabian Allen in West Indian colours the whole year. Man said personal problems. We ain't seen him. We can't afford to not have Fabian Allen in West Indian colours. He's one of the most explosive all rounders. Ball with the bat, with the ball. In the field, we can't not have Fabian Allen around. Anyways, he's showing us his explosive power um, back at home with the Talawas, uh, back with back with his rightful franchise. Let's see what he does with this next ball now. Dwayne Jansen comes in again. He's one for fifteen off ten balls, and Allen goes again. That's gone out the ground as well. Has it? Has it got enough in it? Yes, it has. That's gone on the ground. Back to back sixes. Fabian Allen as FPL. Bailey says Fabian indeed is back. Not for the West Indies, but he's back for the Jamaica Talawas. He's moves to 26 off nine balls. He's maximizing this float in power play, which was unlocked earlier by uh, Rothman Powell. So the Talawas are on fire here. They move to, yeah, Fabian Allen holds the poles as well. So the Talawas move to 81 for three off 35 balls. Boy. Uh, Talawar's ready to set the highest score in the tournament so far. Jansen bowled a very good first over, but this power play over now, he's gone for 15 runs. He's got one ball remaining. Oh, that ball's gone. That ball's gone out the ground as well. Umpire's now looking for a replacement ball. 44 of you in the chat. If you're new to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, follow us at Twitter. In fact, I've got the banner for it. Why am I saying this like I don't have the banner? Uh, oh, it's scrolling at the bottom. One four. So follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Instagram at Carib Cricket. Press like on this video. Subscribe to Caribbean Cricket Podcast. Press that bell for notifications. Go to our website www.caribbeancricketpodcast.com. Final ball of Janssen's over. 
And what's Alan done with that one? He's gone through the covers, down to the man on the boundary for one run. So that's the end of the over. And the Talawas are 82 for three. There are four overs remaining. I can't wait to get to the halfway stage so I can go get a drink. Fifty of them in the chat, says Tashan. Fifty of you in the chat, big up yourselves. You can't all be existing Caribbean Cricket Podcast subscribers. So when this video ends, I hope to look on um, the channel and see that there's the subscriber numbers have gone up and that there's the subsequent likes on the video as well. But big up all yourselves, anybody who is there. Tashan said earlier on, 120 to 130 is a score that the Talawars will make. And then he thinks they might bowl out St. Kitts and Nevis. I also predict that TKR would not be in the finals of the 60, okay? So who do you think will be in the finals? Anyways, who's back in now? Who's bowled that over? That's a six. Whoever just bowled that is a six. Was that Jaden Carmichael? Reefer hits that for six. The partnership is now 46 off 19 balls. Um, Talawas are on mad fire here. Who bowled that? They bought back the young Jaden Carmichael to bowl. I mean, that's brave. Bringing the young uh, Novician back on. Raymond Reefer takes no mercy on him. Hits him for six. Yeah, Sheldon, exactly. Just It's just good entertainment, isn't it? Two hours of your time taken up on TV to basically see some sixes and fours getting lit down. What's there not to like? Next ball, Reefer clears that that's gone out of the ground as well. Jaden Carmichael, he might have had a good first over where he bowled Rothman Powell, but Raymond Reefer says, I don't care if you're 19 years old and you might be a young talent in the region. I'm going to show you that this is big boy cricket. 12 runs off the first two balls, 52 of you in the chat. Press like, press share, press subscribe. The Talawas are doing up a madness right about now. You don't see my Talawar shirt in the background. This is how we do. It's how we do in Jamaica. It's sixes or out. We're not on anything else but sixes or out. That's the Talawar DNA, 94 for three. Take that 95 for three. Reefer plays it down to the man on the boundary run through for a single. So 95 for three off 38 balls. Um, Talawars could get to... What could the Talawars get to here? We've got 21 balls to go. 21 seconds. T -t -t -t. 21 seconds. T -t -t -t. I've got 21 seconds to say what i got to say. Um... 95 for three. Jen Carmichael comes in for his fourth ball of the over. And Fabian Allen says, I want to, I want some of this fun as well. Straight back over Jen Carmichael's head. It's another six. That's 19 off the over. Jaden Carmichael is getting lit down here. Evan Lewis is the captain, by the way. So if anyone's watching this game, what's DJ Bravo doing? Brav, Brav is still in England in the hundred. Um, so um Evan Lewis is captain of the side. Carmichael back in again. That was a wide ball, and uh, Fabian is happy to just pat that down through the covers for one. So one more ball remaining. Carmichael has gone for 20 in this over. One more ball to go. The Talawars have cleared 100. Who knows how much more they could put up here? It's 102 for three. With one more ball to go of this over. What will Carmichael do? Will Reefer go after him? Reefer goes after him. It's another six. Shake my head. I feel sorry for the young man. They, nah, you can't do this to the 19-year-old man. They're out of order. They're out of order. Nah, man. The man's just trying to learn, learn the game and they just licked him down for 25 runs in the over. It's long. It's long. Nah, they didn't need to do him dirty like that. They done him truly dirty. 108 for, 108 for three. 42 balls have been bowled. <laughs> we got three overs remaining, people. Talawar's trying to get up to 150 here. Um, so, <laughs> so, as Michael says, he's better he, get, he better, better he learns now and just gets the licks now at 19 years of age. He might as well just learn. Because see if he touches international cricket for West Indies, true say it's the same licks he's going to get. So you better just learn from now what the pain of the licks feels like. <laughs> you lot, you lot taking no no sympathy for him. All you lot saying it's good that he learns his lesson. Boy, anyways, <laughs> current projected score is 154. John Rasag Jagazar comes in. He bowled a good first over, actually, and he starts off with a dot. I like Jagasar. I think John Russ Jagasar is another uh, bowler in the region who probably should have got more chances 
any chances with the West Indies, and he's now 36, but should have should have um, definitely played some matches for West Indies. Um, so second ball goes for one run. Now, if Evan Lewis is the captain, um, I didn't see him go up to Jaden Carmichael at any point in that over that Carmichael got licked down on. Um, so, and Andre Fletcher did from behind the stumps, but I just feel like your captain's got to get round the young man at that stage. Oh, sugar, there's 69 of you in the live stream. Big up all yourselves. Anyone who's new, press like, press subscribe. If this is your first time coming to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast live watch alongs, go watch. Oh, it's good bowling from Jagasar again. He's gone dot single dot. Good bowling from Jagasar. Um, I think I've got John Rush Jagasar in my CPL um, fantasy team. If you're not in the Caribbean Cricket Podcast CPL fantasy team, let me know and I'll send you the link. You can, uh, it's free. Ah, oh, this time though, Fabian Allen collects, connects, I should say. It's another six for Fabian Allen. Jagasar had bowled really well up until that point. Fabian Allen had enough. He swings at it. That's gone out the ground again. Or not out the ground. It's cleared the boundary rather. Uh, and Fabian Allen is showing every West Indian fan what we have missed this whole summer in the T20 format. Remember, Fabian Allen is a triple threat player, batting, bowling, fielding. He's got it all. And he goes again. This time he doesn't get enough on it, but it plugs in the ground. The man on the boundary, Dominic Drakes, can't come in uh, to catch that. It's just a single. Um, the Talawas are 116 for three off 47 balls. It's been brilliant, in fairness. Rothman Powell, even Raymond Reefer has given some signs that he's got a power game. Um, if needs be. Last ball of Jagasar's second over and Reefa muscles that down to the man on the boundary for a single. Talawaza 117 for three after 48 balls. There will be two more overs to go. The projected score at the moment is 146. This is already the highest score now of the 60 um, tournament. Um, this is definitely probably a bit more fun in terms of what people must have expected from the 60. The Talawar showing how licks a minute can uh, be good old fun. Anyways, back to the comments. Uh, where are we? Carlos Lavelle says, uh, I agree with your earlier comments, Michelle. We need to focus on the formats which suit our style of play. I'm baffled why our ODI team is so poor. Do you know what, Carlos? We just don't have enough players that can play ODIs. And by that, I mean enough players that know how to construct in the batting sense, how to construct a, a, an innings in old Jai cricket. we got batters who are too used to knowing how to construct T20 innings, and they assume that they can apply those same dynamics to 50 overs, and it, it just don't work. And then we don't have enough strike bowlers either. Anyways, Dominic Drakes comes in to bowl the penultimate over. That's a wide. He's going to have to reload that one. Talawar's move up to 118. Um, Michael says, yeah. If you ever debut for West Indies, no one will remember these licks. So get your licks down and learn. That was for the earlier role from Jaden Carmichael. Tashan says, yes, John Ross Jagasar should have got some games for West Indies. He is a good spinner, but it's West Indies cricket. Nothing ever makes sense. Um, Sports Adam says, how short are these boundaries? Listen, St. Kitts is one of the smallest grounds in the Caribbean. So it's it's a licks ground. Um, but you'd be surprised at how many games are tight games in them. Oh, I smoked that. Straight to the man. Oh, that's awful. Who's that? Is that Rutherford? See, that's why he can't pass fitness tests. Um, he smoked it straight to the man at the boundary. Admittedly, it was Shafane Rutherford. Admittedly, um, for Rutherford to have caught, he would have had to have taken the inches off the ground, but then he's let it roll through his legs. Um, who was it? Was that Fabian Allen? That's the person who went out as well. Let me just check that again. Yeah. It's poor. No, I think that's poor fielding. I think Rutherford should have taken that catch. It's, he, yeah, he should have taken that. It's poor. And that one's gone high up in the air. That should be out. Fabian doesn't connect properly. Andre Fletcher takes the catch. Fabian Allen departs for 45 off 17, off 18 balls. That's a fantastic knock from Fabian Allen. He's done his job. Um, sent a reminder around the region why he should be going to the T20 World Cup. If anybody thinks that our T20 side for the World Cup qualifiers is set, it's not because there are players like Fabian Allen who Desmond Haynes better be selecting to go to the T20 World Cup, irrespective of who's done what or who was playing in the summer. Fabian Allen gets a free pass into our squad. I don't care what anyone says. Um, so he's out anyway. So the Talawas are 122 for four. 
Um, I'm not actually sure how many boards are remaining. I didn't see. Um, I think it must be two more boards remaining. I feel like Drake's must have bowled at least four balls uh, in that over so far. Anyways, back to back to um, some comments. Lavelle says, Carlos says, sorry, hard lessons for young Carmichael. It's important that someone puts an arm around him and encourages him. Yes, Carlos, exactly. That's my point. When he was struggling, only... Um, oh, well, that's badly... That's badly line from um, Dominic Drake. Sorry, we're back. Jamie Merchant's come out. Interesting. That's badly line from uh, Dominic Drake's and Reefer just helps that around his legs uh, down to the boundary. Fine for four. I said it was 52 balls. I lied. It was actually 50 balls plus that one from Reef uh, from Drake's. So the Talawad's now 126. Oops, sorry, that's going wrong. 126 for four with one more. No. How many balls left? Three more balls. Oh, he bowled a wide. That's why. Three more balls left to this over. Nah, that's rubbish. Reefer tries to do that thing where you move across your stumps and then paddle it. Don't even connect. Dot ball. Um, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm going back and forth here, people. Um, where are we now in the comments? Yep. BP saying we need Fabian in white ball cricket. Yep. Um, Errol saying, I didn't see this coming. Gell and Lewis must be furious. Yeah, this has been shoddy from St. Kitts. The bowling's been rubbish. I can't lie. Um, right. Reefer moves again. Moves across to the offside, anticipating what Drake's is going to do. It's another dot. Reefer would have been better off just standing still and just paddling it for one. Anyways, he's on 30 off 16 balls. So it's not like he's soaking up balls per se. In fact, it's a very good delivery from Drake's. So good, good Yorker, in fairness. Uh, Wayne Stewart says, goal Talawas, indeed. Carlos says, uh, Fabian Allen is an X factor, as evidenced in his last few games West Indies. We need him back like yesterday, 100%. Final ball of Reefer, Reefer. Drake's over, and it's a full toss. And Raymond Reefer, that plugs in the outfield, comes through for one. The Talawas are 127 for four. We are into the final over. I'm not sure who they're going to give the final over to. It surely can't be Jeremiah Louis. He got he went for bare licks earlier on, so I'm not sure who they're going to give this final um, over to. Who are they going to give it to? Who can bowl it? Let me see uh, who's bowled what so far. Who would they give it to? Who's even got over? It's going to have to go to Jeremiah Louis. Jeremiah Louis's first over went for 24 runs, so they're going to give him the final over. Bowling figures so far, by the way, Dwayne Jansen, one for 22 of his two. John Rush Jagasar, one for 13, the standout bowler of his two. Jaden Carmichael, one for 34 of his two. Dominic Drake's, one for 31 of his two. And now Jeremiah Louis, I assume, is going to get the final over. He already went for 24 in his first over. So Jamie Merchant. Oh, it's not Jeremiah Louis. Who are they giving? Who are they? Wait, is it Louis? Oh, it is Louis. And he just went for licks. Four runs. So first ball of the final over gets licked down to the boundary for four. Uh, was that And it's from Jamie Merchant. Jeremiah Louis finding out very quickly that uh, 60 ball cricket is not the same as his good record in red ball cricket. And to a, uh, to a certain extent, 50 over cricket. See his second ball goes for some licks as well. Um, comes back in, wide ball. He's going to have to reload that. So five. Five runs gone, one ball bowled. Um, thank you to the 55 people who are currently in the live chat. If you haven't yet pressed like, please do so. If you've not subscribed, please do so. If you've not hit that bell, the notification bell, do that as well. If you've liked these live watch-alongs, come back again. We'll have another live game that we watch along for tomorrow. You can follow the Caribbean Cricket Podcast on Twitter and Instagram at Carib Cricket, Facebook, Caribbean Cricket Podcast, website, CaribbeanCricketPodcast.com, and so on and so forth. Anyways, Jeremiah Louis back in. And that's a full toss and taken. Uh, so, Jamie, that's taken by Darren Bravo, who runs in off the boundary. And that's the fifth wicket. So, the Talawas are 132 for five. So, there's five, there's four more balls remaining. Of course, if Louis can get another wicket, then the, oh, the innings is over anyway. Uh, this is the highest score so far. But bear in mind, um, bear in mind, people, that, sorry, bear in mind that, the 
the Patriots have a very explosive batting lineup. So as much as this is a high score, one, three, two for five, the Patriots have Evan Lewis. They've got um, Chris Gale. They've got Andre Fletcher, Shafane Rutherford. So it's, it's not like they've got some dibbly dobbly team who that clearly can't chase this. Uh, where are we? Yeah, Shea had a 237 strike rate today. I saw it, Michael, but then, uh, so what's that say about his 51 of 102 balls in that old EI the other day? So this is what I'm saying, and this is this is what I said in that podcast with um, Jared Kimber that I did. Uh, anyways, Jeremiah Louis has just been cleared out the ground. Reefer takes them for a six down the leg side. Talawas moved to 138 for five. Louis is getting licks upon licks upon licks. Um yeah, the podcast I did with um, uh, Jared Kimber on 99.94 DM, if you lot aren't, haven't listened to that yet, West Indies on 99.94 DM, it's what we do now as a new show on, on that uh, podcast network. And I said that I felt that Hope's knock the other day was a deliberate choice. That's a dot ball, though. Well bowled by Louis. Um yeah, Tashan, so Hemraj did look fitter, but then um, I spoke to somebody who I, who I won't name, I've got to protect their identity, who said to me that, um, suffice to say that the minor league team that Hemraj has been playing for in America, uh, there are people there who said that they believe that Hemraj's fitness is shocking, as in they were shocked at how poor his fitness was, and that's the US minor league teams. I'm just saying what I've been told. That's a run out. And that's it. That's the end of the that's the end of the inning. Shamar Springer just ran off. I don't know where he thought he was running to. That's the sixth wicket. So the Talawas won't get to play out their final two balls. Shamar Springer did a madness. Who told him to run? Anyways, the Talawas are all out for 139. Jeremiah Lewis is probably happy because it means his last two balls can't go for licks. Um, and that's the end of the over. That was nonsense cricket from Shamar Springer. Raymond Reefer should slap him around the back of his head because I don't know what he was doing. Who told him to run anywhere? Um, so, people, that's the end of the innings. Um, so, Talawas don't see out there, don't see out their innings. Uh, let me just quickly. Go for your comments and then I'll take a bit of a break. Go get a drink because I'm thirsty out here, people. I've been chatting for 58 minutes. Uh, right. So uh, where are we? Just go for the last few comments. Um, Aaron says, what was the impression of Shay's innings this morning? My impression is, oh, no, it wasn't Shamar Springer. So I take that back. It was Raymond Reefer. Sorry, Shamar Springer was on strike and Raymond Reefer rang to the other end. Anyways, either way, foolishness. So apologies to Shamar Springer. I didn't realize uh, Raymond Reefer ends on 38, not out of 19. Robin Powell, 32 of 13. Fabian Allen, 45 of 18. Explosive hitting from the Talawas. Anyways, uh, what was the impression? It sh the impression was Shea can obviously accelerate. So someone tell me why he doesn't do it in LGI cricket. Uh, Errol, Drake's been poor today. Yeah, he was poor. Uh, Michael says, Evan Lewis, Russell, and Ryan, Allen again selected will set the precedent now. Likely for all small nation players, we'll see that you can go to World Cup without playing for your nation. No point. Yeah, Michael, the latest podcast that we that was released today on West Indies on 99.94, you'll see that... Oh, no, sorry. No, tell a lie. The next podcast episode that's coming out, Santoka and I talk about this exact point. It's, I think it's coming out on Saturday, where we talk about if West Indies do select certain people for the World Cup, you're going to see a new precedent set. But anyways, uh, look out for that. Uh, who else? Sorry, people, I'm trying to get through all the comments now. Uh, Errol says, this is getting close to a party 20 score. Yep, Patriots will need 140 to win. Uh, FPL Bailey says this will be the highest score all tournament. We'll, we'll see, but it's certainly a good standard to set. Uh, Sheldon says they've got to get Lewis earlier. or it's game over. I agree. You would imagine that Gail and Lewis and Fletcher can unlock the, the floating power play in the first two overs for sure. Um Tashan says, is spin to win again the motto to win the 60, as we saw in the first game, which was dominated spinners and slower bowlers. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, they're all playing on the same ground across the next um, uh, three days of the tournament, so, so we shall see. So anyways, people, 54 of you in the chat, if you haven't already pressed like and subscribe, I'm going to briefly come off the screen, people, um, so I can go get a drink and take about a three-minute break before the Patriots come out to bat.
Um, I mean, you can go, but I'll be back soon um, for sure uh, to, to continue the second half of the chase. But if you are going, press like before you go, press subscribe before you go. And uh, I'll see you in about five minutes. I'm coming off the screen.
Yes, people. So no experimentation. Um, the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots will not be doing any of this Chris Gale at three thing. He will open. He will open with Evan Lewis. But it's quite interesting because um, when Chris Gale has played in that T10 Dubai stuff um, with, I can't even remember the team he plays for in that league, they've batted him at three there. Um, so you would have thought that at the age of 42, Gale turns 43 in a couple of weeks' time, you would have thought that the age of 42, that in a format where you basically need to get going from ball one, um, that you'd use Chris Gale maybe at number three instead, rather than in the power play. It, Gale's game, I mean, he's about to show us why he's still probably the universe boss, but Gale's game isn't necessarily a I go from ball one. Yes, it was about 12 years ago, um, but normally Gale takes a few balls to get um, his eye in. And you can't really do that in T20. Oh, sorry, T20 in T10 slash 60. That's not really the format doing. But anyways, let's see. Let's see how the 42-year-old, soon to be 43-year-old universe boss gets on. Chris Green will open the bowl in for the Talawas. Put in the chat if you think uh, St. Kitts will chase this. You have to give your answer now. Don't try and claim it after like 30 balls. Chris Green comes in. It's Evan Lewis who's on strike. And Evan Lewis shovels that away. To the boundary and we are off with a four you would think that 75 of you in the chat how did that happen i looked down all of a sudden and see 75 men and women if you're in the live chat i just went and looked at the stats it says only 27 likes you know i swear there's been more people in this than justifies 27 likes so if you 87 if you've been watching this and you're yet to press the like button you're you're dissing man you know press the like in it share subscribe press the bell notify Thank you to the people who have pressed subscribe, though. Uh, the subscribers have gone up uh, since this live started, and that's a dot to four. We're over the 2.7K mark, so the next stop is to try and get to 2.8. 2,800 subscribers on the Caribbean Cricket Podcast YouTube channel. If you're new to the YouTube channel, go and look at our back catalogue. The people in here who have been longtime supporters of the podcast and the channel, that's a wide ball, Green left ball again, uh, people who, who are long-time supporters. Who's this now? Oh, my God. Look at this guy now. Um, yeah, the people who are long-time supporters will tell you that there's so much content in our back catalogue, so many podcasts to watch. So do go and watch them if you're new. 88 of you in the live chat, big up yourselves for coming through. Let's see if we can touch 100. Let's see if we can touch it. Share it with people. Tell them to come watch Cabin Creek Podcast. Say there's a guy with dreads here, just out here for the people, just doing one-man commentary shows. Anyways, Chris Green back in, and Evan Lewis pummels that out of the ground for a six. Then Kits and Nevis Patriots are 11 without loss after four balls. That's the first six. One more six. You would think one of Chris Gale or Evan Lewis is going to hit a six in the next 10, six balls. Uh, I'm sorry, six balls, uh, eight balls. Uh, will unlock... Uh, um, uh, a floating power play. I love this rule. I love this floating power play rule. What, what do you not think about the floating power play rule? I'm a big fan of it, you know. Unlock, unlock, um, unlock another power play by hitting two sixties. I, I like that rule. Um, yesterday when I was watching the women's match, um, I said that one of the rules they should have next year, um, is that the mystery free hit. Ball, the one where you vote on that should be worth double the runs of whatever you get so rather than it be oh you just get a mystery free hit it should be whatever you get off that mystery free hit you double the amount of runs uh, that's how you make the batters maximize it more anyways chris gale is on strike for the last ball of chris green's over and gale packs that out for a quick single yes i did say a quick single and uh, the first six balls, the first over ends with the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots and 13 without loss. Does Evan Lewis hold a West Indies Central contract? No. Or if he did, who even knows, man? Who even knows? I, I'll, I'll try and find out for you. It doesn't matter if he does any. In fact, no, he does. And it doesn't matter, though, because it's not like he's adhering to it. All now I'm waiting for Evan Lewis to drop the bars. Man said, Cricket West Indies aren't telling the full story. All now he ain't told us another story. So I'm waiting for the full bars to be dropped. 
Anyway, second over is going to go to who are they? Miguel Pretorius. So Robin Powell has asked Miguel Pretorius to bowl the second over. And it should be Evan Lewis, who is on the strike. Remember, I think Kits and Nevis need another six to unlock a floating power play after this over. And Lewis hit one. It looks like he has... Has he got enough on that? No, it's a four. I mean, it's still good. It's a boundary, but it's not, an, not a six. Patriots need to 17 without loss. I would expect Evan Lewis to perform in the course of this 60. And Evan, if, if I know Evan Lewis properly, he's going to put in a performance in the 60 in CPL, which is basically daring Cricket West Indies to not take him to the T20 World Cup. And it's going to cause a huge cuss out in the region if he performs well in 60 in CPL and then doesn't go to the World Cup. Uh, Lewis goes after that one outside the off stump. I think he might be out here. Oh, that's a fantastic catch. Who's that? Kenar Lewis. Lewis Lewis went after it, and Lewis, Kenar Lewis, catches him, um, fall into the ground to keep his eye on the ball. It's the big wicket, the big fish, and the Patriots are 17 for one. Miguel Pretorius strikes, and Evan Lewis has to go. Couldn't get on top of the bounce, but it went high in the sky. Uh, you had Raymond Reefer. That's a really good catch. You had Raymond Reefer hunting it down at the same time, but Kenar Lewis kept his eye on the ball. Uh, and Evan Lewis, the captain of the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots, has to go the Talawas strike. David says he loves to see Evan Lewis play. Well, boy, he's gone. So you might love to see him play, but he ain't there anymore. The new batter, will it be Shafane Rutherford or will it be Andre Fletcher? It should be Andre Fletcher, given you want to maximize, they'd want to maximize the power play, you would think. So let's see who they turn to. Yes, it is Andre Fletcher. That's the right move. They've got four balls left to try and unlock the floating power play to scale and strike, and he dabs that for a single. Palawas, sorry, Palawas, Patriots are eight, uh, 18 for one of nine balls. Yes. Really good captain, Canalo. He's a big guy, and I felt like the earth shake was shaking in my room when he fell to the ground there. So Miguel Vitorius, one for five off his first three balls. Three more balls of this particular over. What can he do with them? Robin Powell making sure his field is great. Spice Man is on the strike. And Spice Man comes down the wicket but can only deflect it behind. To the wicket keeper. Who's wicket keeping match? Oh, Django um, for the Talawas. Hmm. So, um, where are we at? One for five of four balls for Miguel Pretorius. He comes in now for the fifth ball of his over. Fletcher comes down to meet him, and that, well, one bounce four. Fletcher grimaces because he was trying to get a six to unlock the mystery, I keep calling it mystery, the floating power play, but it's only a one bounce four. So they're going to have one more ball. Remember, they think it's probably need this floating power play because remember, they're chasing 140 to win, and um, the Talawas did unlock their floating power play, which they Scored. I can't remember how many runs I got. It was a lot. They scored off it with everybody inside the circle. So uh, Spice Man has one more ball. Whatever he does, he's got a charge Pretorius regardless. He's got to go for a six. Unlocking this floating power play is crucial if uh, the Patriots want to win. 
and he can't he can't be in fact he gets no run off it so that's the end of the power play the Patriots will not have another power play they're 22 for one and at this stage of the match you would say that the Talawar should close it out knowing that the Patriots do not have another power play to play with that's good bowling uh in the opening two overs from the Patriots uh, from the Talawar sorry David, because they're an audience, there's a much bigger crowd in for this game than there was for any of the games yesterday. I didn't see the crowd for this morning's game, but I would assume, given that it's the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots playing, that the crowd for this game is much bigger um, than the opening game this morning between Guyana and who are they playing again? St. Lucia. Right, so this is interesting. So. Nicholson Gordon will get the third over. Now, Nicholson Gordon has been taking a bad load of wickets for Jamaica um, in recent times domestically. Uh, trial games, um, first-class games. But he's 31 years old. In keeping with the usual kind of trend in the Caribbean, where players seem to mature much, much later in terms of coming to the scene. But... I th well, then you just saw it with that first ball. I think Nicholson Gordon is a bit of a wild bowler. Takes wickets, but hella expensive. It'll be very interesting to see how he copes in this format of cricket. Because technically, he's going to take licks in this format of cricket, but we shall see. First ball wide, he's going to have to bowl that one again. Second, see what I mean? Anyone who's watching this, what have, what have those first two balls just shown you about what literally what I just said? Man's quick, man's wild. Wild, you know. That second ball was pure wildness. We'll have to bowl again. Man bowled that ball like he was trying to find Dungeon River Fall. I don't know what he was doing. <clears throat> if you don't know, by the way, people, um, Kirtley Ambrose and Shiv Shandipal are the coaches for the Talawar. Anyways, that's the first legitimate ball of Nicholson Gordon's over, and um, Fletcher pulls that for a single. Mm -hmm. 25 for one of 13 balls. Universe boss back on strike for his countryman. And the boss nah, just gets it past the man on the perimeter for a single. The boss does only face three balls and he's got three runs. Sorry, yeah, three balls, three runs. Barely being on strike. The Patriots 26 for one. Off of 14 at balls. Pure wildness again from Nicholson Gordon and Andre Fletcher. Was that? Oh, no, he's out. Wait, what, what happened there? Is he out? Oh. So he was out. Camera angle did not help me there. I don't know what happened. Camera angle just didn't even show what happened. Either way, he's got a single, so they must have just bounced in front of Chris Green on the boundary. Um, for all of me saying that Nicholson Gordon goes quick and wild, he's only gone for five runs of his first three balls. Two of those were wides. The Universe boss is back on the strike. And the Universe boss takes him on, but can only pull that for one run. Again, Halawar's well on top here with the ball. 28 for one after 16 balls. Uh, two balls remain of Nicholson Gordon's over. Can he get away without being struck for a boundary? Andre Fletcher is back on strike. That's a wild delivery. And out, and out, and out. <laughs> What I tell you, man, wild, but he takes wickets. Nicholson Gordon strikes. Fletcher can only toe in that straight back to Nicholson Gordon. This gives him a court and a bowl. Um, and that's out. The second wicket falls to St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots. Fletcher goals. 
It was a wild delivery. Fletcher had left that. That would have been a wide. He, he fetches it and tries or tries to fetch it and just told it, toe ends it straight back to Nicholson Gordon. Nicholson Gordon is absolutely uh, jubilant with that. But it's, I mean, Andre Fletcher will look at that and go, oh boy, I was scoffed. Six of six for Andre Fletcher. Uh, that should bring someone like Shafane Rutherford to the crease. But St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots are struggling out here. It does not look like they're going to be chasing down 140 today. Who is the next person to come to the crease? It's no, it's uh, it's mini AB. They've all the brevet. Everyone's been chatting about this guy. I've never actually seen him play before. Let's see how good he is. First ball. Doesn't beat the man on the perimeter, but he runs through for one run. And the, that's the end of the over. The Patriots are 29 for two. So, mini AB is at the crease of the universe, boss. Um, what a tag to be given when you're only 19 years old. Mini AB. Man's already got development deals with Mumbai Indians or something. And he ain't really even done much yet in cricket. And he, or here he is already as a franchise player. If anything shows you what cricket has become, it's, it's that. Thing is, for players like a Nicholson Gordon, it's important to actually do well in the 60. Because if you do well in the 60, when some players are missing because they've they're still playing in other franchise tournaments elsewhere in the world. You can basically play yourself into selection for the CPL. So good, good, good for players like him. Anyways, the new bowler is, I don't know who that is. Who is that? Was that Jamie Merchant? That just looked like he flung the ball. Was that even a legal delivery? It is Jamie Merchant. Uh, AJR, yes, it's, uh, it's showing on BT Sport 3. Yeah, I've, uh, Michael, I've heard Baby AB can lick shot, but I've just never seen him play, so we shall see, you know? Hmm. Interesting action. Right, so anyways, uh, Devil Brevis um, gets a single. Patriots, this is real slow going from the Patriots. They're 30 for two off 19 balls. The required run rate is 16.1. Couple of Talawas fans in the um, stadium must be loving what they're seeing so far. Gail goes after Jamie Merchant. He clears, and that's a boundary, a welcome boundary. Uh, three men chase it down, but they can't collect it. It's a welcome boundary for St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots. It's a boundary for the universe boss. And the Patriots are 35 for two after 21 balls. He's in a mammoth 140. Jamie Merchant, boss is still back on, is still on strike. He's on nine off six balls. That's gone down leg side and he'll have to bowl that one again. That's a wide. Was it a wide? Oh, no, but he hasn't. Got it. Oh, no, it's a wide. Yep. We'll have to bowl that one again. He'll have to reload it. And Gail shovels that one and it's out. Fantastic. The one person he didn't want to find is Chris Green, probably the best fielder on the St. Kitts and sorry, on the Talawas uh, team. Gail tried to shovel that down to uh, the cow to cow corner. Um, and Green runs in off the boundary and takes the catch. And the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots lose their third wicket. It's a really good catch from um, Chris Green. Remember, St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots can only afford to lose six wickets. Just like the Talawas earlier on, the Talawas uh, didn't complete their 60 balls because 
the 57th ball, or yeah, the 57th ball uh, was their sixth wicket. So they didn't even see out their 60 balls. St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots have lost three wickets after only 22 balls of this innings. Um, and the problem is, the reason why I think St. Kitts will continue to lose wickets is because they have to chase a big total. So don't be surprised if St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots don't see out their 60 balls here because they can't just, I mean, they can. They can just keep batting along, but the run rate is already over 17. They're going to have to go for it. So my my, my humble prediction is that St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots are going to lose all of their six wickets. David says the Talawas are favourites now. I think the Talawas are favourites even before that wicket. Oh, is that LBW? That's out. That's out. Oh, hold on. That's, that's worth a review. Is that not worth a review? What are they going to do here? Are they going to review that? They're reviewing it. I think that's out. So, have they reviewed it? Yes or no? What's going on? Did they review it? I mean, Jamie Merchant was reviewing it, but it's got to be the captain. It's got to be Robin Powell who reviews it. They... What's going on? Did they review it? Yes or no? Yes, they are reviewing it. Now, I think this is out. We'll soon see, though. Rutherford tries to go for the reverse sweep. It catches him on his back pad. Now, it definitely pitches in line. Has it straightened? I think this is out. I think this is out. I think it's taken out his off stump. It might even be taken out middle stump. Has he, oh, he might have an inside edge on it. Hold on. There is no inside edge. So I think this is out. I'm surprised the umpire gave it out, uh, gave it not out. Ah, oh, oh, it's not. Okay, hold on, people. I might have to, it hit his front pad first, not his back pad. So maybe, is it taking out his leg stump then? Gone. Gone. It is out. Talent sink. First ball, duck. Golden duck. Rutherford goals. Brought out the reverse sweep to his first ball. Gone. Dunce shot. Even though they've got to chase runs, it's a big dunce shot. Um, and St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots are 36 for four. As, as I said to you lot, what did I say? What did I say literally one ball ago? I think St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots are going to lose all six wickets. So 36 for four. LBW, bold Jamie Merchant. St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots, their innings ain't even got going yet. Not even reached the halfway stage, four wickets down, and it brings little Bravo to the crease. So Darren Bravo, Darren Bravo comes to the crease. I don't know what St. Kitts are supposed to be doing from here now. Thing is, it's only the 60. There's no use in just pat, pat, patting the ball till the end of the game. Just like, get rich or die trying, isn't it? Like, just, just hit the ball. If you're out, you're out. At this stage of the innings, there's nothing to be gained by patting the patting the ball down the ground for ones here and there. You might as well go big or go home at this stage. And if you're all out for 55, you're all out for 55. Anyways, Jamie Merchant to Darren Bravo. And Bravo gets off strike with a single. Uh, that's the end of Merchant's over. Two for eight off his first over. He's probably won the game for the Talawas with that over get in the wickets of the Universe boss and Shafane Rutherford. Robman Powell um, organising proceedings out there. That was such a done shot from Shafane Rutherford. Reverse sweep on your first shot. Anyways, I can't help none of these modern day critters, man. Reverse sweep, you know, first shot. He ain't even, ain't even, ain't even, ain't even assessed what's going on out there. Time for the reverse sweep. God, dunce. So who's got the new? Oh, Shamar Springer will get the next over for the Talawas. And he bowls that wide, and Brevis should. Uh, no, Mang, uh, Fabian Allen comes in off the boundary, and that is a single.
yeah, Michael, exactly. Match awareness, you know. That I don't care what I don't care what version of cricket it is. You 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 don't even assess the wicket. Not even not even for one ball. Uh, these modern modern cricketers I don't understand. Uh, anyways, let me not even say what I found out during the break. Right, here comes the here comes the you can call me on my cell phone. The mystery free hit ball. Shamar Springer will have to bowl it to Darren Bravo. He might as well swing for the hills here. Wait, what? Wait a minute, what? It's a wide, okay. I was going to say. Um, it's a wide, so um, Shamar Springer will have to bowl that mystery free hit ball again because that was a wide. Patriots are 39 for four. And we will get the mystery free hit ball bowled again. What can Bravo do with it? He goes after it. It's gone way high in the sky. I don't think that's got enough. It's not got enough on it um, to get to the boundary. Chris Green takes a catch, but of course it's a free hit. And they're able to run two runs. Remember that with these mystery free hit balls, um, with the mystery free hit balls, the no, um, the runs don't count against the bowler and they don't count for the batter. Um, it just counts to the scorecard. So they run two. Um, and I guess, well, at least it wasn't a dot. Bravo did the right thing. He just went after it. It doesn't matter if you're out because you're not out. Anyways, Shamal Spring comes back in. And Bravo shovels that but can't meet the man on the boundary and he'll run through for one. St. Kitts are 41 for four after 26 balls. The run rate must be something manic. I need to go see what that run rate currently is. It's going to be something obscene. Might be over 20 at this stage. All right, Shamar Springer comes in again. Bruvis goes after it, and that is a six. It's a huge hit. Um, so uh, Baby AB, or whatever they call him, uh, hit Shamar Springer back over his head. That's uh, a welcome six. That's a welcome six for uh, St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots, and they move to 48 for four from 28 balls. I mean, I've said that the Talawas are already going to win this, but you never know. You never know. It's not over till it's actually over. Um, a couple more, a couple more, well, not a couple more, a lot more shots like that. And it brings uh, the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots right back into the game. Wow. Uh, yes, big up, MV. Good evening to you. Brevis goes after that one. Can't clear the man on the perimeter and just gets a single. One more ball of Springer's over. They are. He's taking. He's gone for ten, off five. The, the first five balls of his over the Saint Kitts and Nevis Patriots. Forty nine for four with one more ball of this over to go. What will Shamar Springer do? He's rolling to the left handed Darren Bravo. And Bravo plays that for a quick single. So that's the end of Shamar Springer's over. He gets the Nevis Patriots at 50 for four, chasing 140. They only have 30 more balls to go. They've already had their mischief free hit. They do not have a floating power play over to maximize. They would have to do something extraordinary from here to, to win this game. Right. Carlos says simple equation, scoreboard pressure plus four plus poor match awareness <laughs> times times lack of cricket sense equals losing nine times out of ten. Boy, you might have just described the West Indies there, you know. <laughs> I love that equation, you know, Carlos. Scoreboard pressure plus poor match awareness times lack of cricket sense <laughs> equals losing. Love that. Sorry, we're in a bit of a water break here. So, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say to anyone what do you think is going to happen. We know what's going to happen. Um, so, anyways, Chris Green is back in 
to bowl, com, uh, bowl his second over. And he starts off with a dot bravo when after him can't connect dot ball. Bravo goes after him this time though and flat six. Flat six, he does connect with that one. It's a flat six from Brav and the Patriots move to 56 for four. So welcomes another welcome six for the Patriots. It looks like it looks like too little too late, but you never know. Uh Michael, I'm gonna come to you. Give me a second. I'm gonna come, I'll answer that in a minute. Um Bravo goes after him again, underedges it through Jangu's legs. They run through for a... I'm not sure if he even underedges it. It might just be a buy. But anyways, 57 for four of 32 balls. David, I think he is. I can't remember. In fact, yeah, definitely. Yeah, he is. He is. He is. Right, Michael. So what did I find out uh, during the break? Um... I have no reason to believe this story isn't true. Um, so I'm just going to repeat it verbatim as to what I was told. So when West Indies played India in the matches in Florida, right, Brivis comes down the track and launches Chris Green out of the ground for his second six. He moves to 16 off six. I think it was Michael who said that this baby AB boy can lick shots. Well, it's another licking he's handed out to um, Chris Green. And the Patriots move to 63 for four of 33 balls. They're still in this slightly. They're still ever so slightly in this game. The required run rate is 18 off this over. But I mean, I mean, if they can, if Brevis can hit a couple more sixes like that, then they're technically still in this game, even with a required run rate of 18. Um, but he's obviously feeling good. 16 uh, runs of six ball balls. Darren Bravo is 10 runs of seven balls. We need a couple more sixes like that, though. Let's see what he's got for this delivery. Goes after him again. This might be caught. No, it's another six. Back-to-back -back sixes from Devil Brevis. He moves to 22 off seven. Can do St. Kitts believe they can chase this down? It's 69 for four. Green has gone for 32 runs with two more balls to go. Brevis goes after him again. Is it another six? It's another six. Okay. Listen, this is a bit of a madness now. This over has gone for 25. Brevis is saying, you know what? This game ain't over. There was me saying Talawaza won this. All of a sudden, Green's Oh, sorry, that was the end of Green's over. That over went for 25 runs. All of a sudden, St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots score moves up to 75 for four. Brevis has just shown us why everyone's calling him Baby AB. He showed us why Mumbai Indians have decided that he's basically their player now and South Africa will never see him play a match for them. Um, it's a, has phenomenal hitting. Can the... Patriots chase this. Can they still chase this? They've only got two wickets remaining, though. Remember, they can only afford to lose two more wickets. Chris Green bowls out, goes for 35 of his um, two overs. Now, Nicholson Gordon, the wild man, the wild man, he either goes for licks. Sorry, he 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 takes wickets, but he will he will also go for a bit of a tap. What can he do? Uh, Patriots need 65 from 24 balls. First ball. Brevis goes after him. Has he got enough on that? Has he got enough? Yes, he has. Just goes over the boundary. Brevis says, listen, I'm about to show the whole world why they call me Baby AB. It's another six. All of a sudden, you're starting to wonder who's going to win this game. The run rate is now 15 per over. Oh, this is going to be an interesting matchup because Nicholson Gordon bowls fast, bowls wild. If he errs anything offline, he'll get licked down. But if he does get one on target, he will likely take a wicket. 59 of 23 balls. St. Kitts could nick this, you know. If you kind of sense that it's Brevis or Bust here. Oh, 
ball. Brevis tries to go after Gordon again, but too much pace on that ball. It's a dot ball. Gordon gives him a stare down as well. He's up for the battle. He's up for the battle for sure. 59 runs needed of 22 balls. The last six balls have gone for 25 runs. The required run rate is 16. So this is still the Talawar's game to lose. But you see some of those sixes that Brevis has been licking down? Boy, I don't know. I don't know, you know. I don't know if I can say if Talawar's will definitely win this. Gordon again. Brevis goes after him. But that looks like he might be out. It's out. He's got him. I told you lot. I told you lot about Nicholson Gordon. The man is a wicket taker. He's a wild man. Wait, Brevis is standing there, though. Hold on. What's going on? What's going on? Why hasn't Brevis gone anywhere? Is he saying no ball? Hold on, people. One second before I start doing my... He caught the toe end of the bat. Uh, who took the catch? Is that Rothman? Yeah, Nicholson Gordon, people. He's a wicket taker. He's... Yeah, he's gone. He's gone. So 81 for five. Um... Gordon, Nicholson Gordon, said it. Anyone who's been in the live from the beginning, I said, I said you lot, wild man bowler takes wickets. He's been taking wickets by the bucket loads um, in Jamaica. Late developer. I mean, he's, 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 he's got two important wickets. Took Andre, took, got Andre Fletcher earlier and has got Devil Brevis now. And that should be the game. Uh, the Patriots only have one more wicket remaining. Um. They only have one more wicket remaining. So, yeah, yeah, that's it for them. Kirtley Ambrose must be pleased uh, to see how the Talawars have gone about their business. Who's next to the crease? Who's left that they can bring in? It is, oh, it's Dominic Drakes. So it's down to Dominic Drakes and Little Bravo to see how close they can drag this game. They can't win from here. No way. No way can they win from here. Also, Michael, sorry, the story I heard during the break. So when West Indies played India uh, during the T20 series in uh, Florida, um, Chandrapal Hemraj and Shafane Rutherford were flown out to Florida to do testing because Cricket West Indies wanted to, they want, they're on the radar, right? Cricket West Indies want to select them. So they were flown out to do testing in the hope that the two of them would pass the fitness test to make them eligible for selection. Bro, uh, during the break between innings, somebody sent me the scores that they got on the test. If I speak, if I speak about the scores they got on the test, <laughs> let me not tell you lot what those two got on the test, but all you need to know is the score that they got on that test, I would beat it. That's all you need to know. I can't, I can't. When when I found out and the person messaged me and told me, I was just like, you know, I'm done. And I'll read, in fact, let me read you the exact reply I sent when I got the message. Let me read you the reply I sent when I got it. I said, this is the response I sent. I've had enough of these players getting, and then I've said what the score is. And I said, any professional athlete that gets that score is wasting our time. That is ridiculous. I'm done with I'm done with these players. I'm done with them. I'm done with them, you know. Pure joy. These players, they, these players treat West Indies cricket like patty shop. I'm done with them. I'm done with them. Ty, I'm not defending none of them. If I did, true, I can't release the scores, but just suffice to say, if any of you got children, your 15 year old son or daughter would beat the score that some of those people got. It's madness. Utter madness. I'm done with those players. They're wasting our time. They're actually wasting our time. Imagine Cricket West Indies flew them out, you know, and man did. Anyways, let me not let me not talk no more. So people who are in the live who are like diehard West Indian fans, like go 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 share that story. This is why we can never progress, you know. Anyways, um. Uh, Pretorius is back into the attack. Patriots are 84 for five um, after 43 balls.
and bold. That's the end of the innings. Pretorius bolds Bravo. Bravo tries to go, go for it. And that's the end of the game. The Patriots only last 43 balls. Like I said, I predicted that they would only... I predicted that they wouldn't they'd get bowled out. I didn't think they'd see out all of their balls. Um, and that is it. That's how quick these games can end. As I look at my timer, this game has ended after one hour and 45 minutes. And that's with a 10, 15 minute break in between plus... So actually, if I take out the 15-minute break plus the 10 minutes before the start of the match, this game was over within one hour and 25 minutes. So so anyone who tries to say to me, anyone who tries to say to me, oh, 60 is a bunch of foolish. This is over quick. That was all one hour and 25 minutes, game done. We can go and get on with our lives now. We don't have to watch no more cricket. That's comprehensive by the Talawas. It's a really, really good victory. Um, led by... Led by um, Rothman Powell's power hitting, Fabian Allen's power hitting, even Raymond Reefer came to the party with a power hitting. Um, that that's what the Talawas have got this year. They don't look like a good team, but they have got power hitters. So do the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots, but the Talawas simply outbold them. The Talawas outbold them. Nicholson Gordon, sorry, Nicholson Gordon, the wild man, got two wickets. Miguel Pretorius, I'll read you the figure, sorry. Miguel Pretorius, 1.2 overs, two for nine. Nicholson Gordon, two overs, two for 16. Jamie Merchant, one over, two for eight. Shamar Springer, one over, none for 11. Chris Green, two overs, none for 38. Uh, Devil Brevis showed us um, what he's all about and why he's got all the hype and why he's being called baby um, AB um, with 34 off 11 balls. But that's all St. Kitts really Nobody else weren't saying anything in the St. Kitts and Nevis team. So, so it's a deserved victory. It's a deserved victory for the Jamaica Talawas. Well deserved. Um, Supernova, so I'll just come to your last few comments before I wrap up. Uh, Rub Supernova says, Rutherford, I know, doesn't care because he's earning money elsewhere. But surely, surely Hemra should have some motivation. Listen, I'm with you. I've, I've long been told by people that Rutherford doesn't care. And of the two of them, or I'm, I'm, I'm unwilling to release what their scores were maybe maybe sometime later this week month year i might but suffice to say rutherford got a, a, a smaller score than hemraj so hemraj was fitter than him now i'm not sure fame rutherford but all i'm going to say is for hemraj to be fitter than rutherford tells me that rutherford's doing it on purpose i don't care rutherford's doing it on purpose I've, I've i've kept saying this that i think that there's some players who are doing this foolishness on purpose there's a tiny more piece to the story that i haven't told you lot because it might expose the person who told me if i tell you that piece the detail in fact no, i'm going to tell you <laughs> i'm going to tell you lot this here's here's the last bit of the story to give you lot a bit of a joke before you go one of the two of them i won't say which one one of the two of them when they flopped the test, said that the reason they flopped the test is because it was too hot. So that's why they flopped. Both of them are from Guyana. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. The man said, it's too hot. It's too hot. I can't, I can't do it properly. Man from Guyana said that it's too hot. People, dash, dash away them. As as who, whoever who who said it, cut them loose. Paul Weston said, "Cut them loose." Listen, I'm I'm saying say same thing. Cut them loose in it. Just cut them loose because it's a patty shop thing. Cut them loose. We can't help them. We can't help them. We really can't help them. It's a joke thing. But you know, I saw it go. Um. So yeah, so Talawas win. Talawas win today uh, by however many runs. Uh, massive victory. What forties? What's that? 40, 21, by 60 runs or 59 runs. Uh, so that's a massive victory um, for the Talawas. Um, I didn't burn the source, people. <laughs> Paul says, don't burn your source. I didn't burn the source because at the end of the day, nobody will know where I got that story from. But um, as I always say, though, when I, when, I, when I say stuff like this, I always say, if I'm lying, tell me I'm lying then. Prove that I'm lying. Um, and, and the thing is, that story I've told, I've got a worse story than that that I've never told about one of those two players. I've got a worse, I've got a worse story than that, which I've never told about one of those two players. But that, that one I can't tell because that would truly burn a source. So if I've got a worse story than that, and I just told you lot that story, imagine how bad the worst story is. This is why I'm saying I can't be bothered with some of these players no more. I can't bother with them. It. This is what, in fact, for those of you who are longtime supporters, 
This is why I've always said, why don't these players just come out and say they don't care about playing for West Indies? It would just be easier. We could all shut up. Just come out and just admit, I don't want to play for West Indies. I don't care. And it's cool. I think we'd all be cool, you know, because then we could say, man, don't care. So go do your thing. Go get your bag. Do what you need to do because we understand that you don't care. That's fine. That's fine. Just stop wasting our time. Just, just, just tell the people then that you don't want to play and we can all move on with our lives, you know? But anyways, anyways, thank you everyone who um who tuned in for the live. Like I say, I should I'll 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 do a game tomorrow. Um, I think I don't know which one yet, but based on the schedule, for those who don't know, so there's two more games today for those of you who are watching on TV. Barbados women versus TKR women, three o'clock Eastern time. Um, so for you, for those in the Caribbean, that's in about 45 minutes. Uh, and then Barbados Royals men versus TKR men. That looks like it's going to be a really good game. Um, that's at 10, that's at 5.30 Eastern time. And then tomorrow, St. Lucia versus St. Kitts, 10 o'clock. Uh, TKR, this is men, sorry. TKR um, versus Guyana, 12.30. Uh, Guyana women versus TKR women, 3 o'clock. And then Talawas versus Royals, Barbados Royals at 5 30 so if i had to pick right now i probably think that the game i'll end up doing as the watch along will be tkr versus guyana so curry chicken versus chicken curry i might do the the curry chicken versus chicken curry derby um uh at, at 12 30 eastern time tomorrow so look out for that it'll be on the it'll be on twitter it'll be in the face i'll advertise it in the twitter on the facebook groups and so on and so forth but i'll make a decision tomorrow as to which game I actually cover, but as usual, thank you for everyone who came in the live. Thank you for the comments and, and so on and so forth. Look forward to seeing you all tomorrow if you've got time. If you can't be there, I'll catch you um, in the next one. Uh, and keep keep looking into the 60, you know, and uh, follow the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. Before you go, press like, press subscribe, tell the people them, et cetera, et cetera. But thank you, everyone. Um, let me just take everything off the screen so it doesn't stay there. Uh, thank you, everyone. And take care. And good night. We rule the cricket world. Now the rules. Welcome to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, your one stop shop for all things West Indies cricket. By the fans, for the fans. 